As driving simulators have become an important teaching and research tool, Colin Novak, engineering professor virtually connected from University of Windsor, will now discuss benefits and challenges of their use in higher education. Professor Novak will share an active learning and research experience based on automotive NVH SQ simulation tools in the context of a teaching and research laboratory. Good morning or afternoon, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and share my screen right away and, uh, and we'll move forward. Uh, I'm hoping you can see that right now. Um, again, thank you for, for having me. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here to, to speak to everyone at the, the VI grade um, uh, symposium. So let me... Okay. Um, I think the video already gave an excellent introduction, so uh, I'm not going to belabor you with talking too much about myself, except for I do want to um, prelude my presentation by saying in my 30 years experience, um, about 18 of that has been restricted to test. In the last 12 years or so, I've, I've embraced the, the idea and the technology and the synergies that that um, simulation and simulation tools can, can give to a, to a research lab. So today I've been asked to share my views about simulation tools and their use in higher education. There are great benefits to using simulation tools for teaching and research, but these benefits don't come out without some of their challenges. There are many ways to define simulation. Some may define simulation as an act of deception or a clever way to trick you. But from an engineer's perspective, we see simulation and simulators as tools to build and test ideas or concepts without the need to manufacture a prototype. For a design manufacturing environment, this can come with great cost savings. In education, eh, the metrics are a little bit different. We don't gauge the time it will take to bring a product to market. Instead, we measure the experience and the growth and the product of developing minds, that being the students. We also measure the innovation of the ideas that define our research. While these outputs are more difficult to put on a, say, a balance sheet, simulator tools, when used in the classroom and laboratory, facilitate a deeper understanding of engineering concepts by engaging the student's prior knowledge base, whether it be taken from lectures, homework, textbooks, and with a large amount of practice. Having said that, I don't view simulation as a technology, but rather as a strategy. And that is how I will approach it in today's presentation. But that then begs the question, what is the strategy? To answer that, we must also define the roles of higher education. When most people think of higher education and the university environment, they think about teaching and learning. Much has changed though in the past 20 years or even the last 10 years and just think about the past two years. Think about the mandatory pivot that professors and students were asked to take two years ago from in-person learning to strictly online learning. I was given about a week or two to learn the tools and modify my pedagogy to teach virtually. Uh, in the end, I think it actually made me a better instructor Many others didn't embrace the opportunity and were not successful. I think of the same when embracing simulation technologies. Fortunately though, uh, most students proved to be very resilient. Similarly, I think the benefits of using simulation tools to teach can be the most, have the most impact if fully embraced. Simulation as a tool to evaluate gives the opportunity to both succeed and fail without the potential detrimental impact of a failed experiment or a test on a prototype. This gives me the opportunity to better evaluate my students' work because they can proceed with less inhibitions. In some cases, we can learn more from our failures than from our successes. And simulator tools allow failure without the consequences. Innovation and the ability to report it is one of the keys to successful research. For the same reason that I gave about evaluation strategies, simulation tools can facilitate research to go, and very quickly so, to levels that experimentation is not often feasible. My biggest successes have been in my collaboration with industry. 
Industry brings real questions and needs to the table for which they may not have the resources or time to investigate. Aside from teaching, I think industrial collaboration has the greatest potential to embrace simulation tools and higher learning. I'd now like to look at each of these uh, areas and share my experience as to how I have used simulation tools to successfully fulfill the needs of my students, my organization, as well as my industrial partners. And at the same time, identify the challenges. Simulator tools can be categorized as PC-based or virtual immersive tools. Think of, uh, of a vehicle buck or an in-vehicle simulator. From a teaching perspective, the PC-based tool is the most effective since it can be most easily made available to large groups through multi-seat licenses and large teaching computer labs. Our labs at Windsor, we can accommodate about 150 simultaneous students with the limitation being based more on the availability of teaching assistants to help. Immersive tools are better suited for small size graduate student teaching, if even at all. Other than the cost of software licensing, the computer infrastructures are already there, making PC-based simulation tools a cost-effective tool compared to experimental setups and labs. Learning materials, assignments, demonstrations, they can all be presented using simulation tools with varying degrees of complexity, thus accommodating students with different levels of skill and experience, such as undergraduate teaching compared to a more advanced graduate student course. This can also accommodate varying expectations for critical thinking. Students can work and explore solutions on their own time, given the software can be, be made available anytime, thus accommodating the individual pace and ability to absorb for the students. But as I said earlier, Simulators in the classroom and laboratory, they also facilitate a much deeper understanding of engineering concepts by engaging the students' previous theoretical learning with a large amount of practice that would otherwise be unavailable in a learning set setting. The first point here is a bit of an oxymoron, given that I've touted the fact that simulation tools give a greater breadth of exposure. However, there are still limits. Virtual buttons don't give the same tactile feedback of a real button. PC-based simulation lacks the fidelity of a virtual simulator in that it lacks the emotion and the contextual realism. For example, the sound experience while driving an automobile compared to listening simply through a, a set of speakers on, on the PC. Traditional laboratory experiments have always been deemed an essential teaching tool. However, elaborate equipment and data acquisition is expensive with a high learning curve. It also requires valuable physical space in a lab for a setup that may only be used a few times a year. Simulation tools can provide much of the same experience without these costs. This is similar to how I've integrated videos in my lectures as we move away from a simple chalk and talk pedagogy. Because of the ability for individual study and time flexibility, Exploration using simulation tools is very effective for project-based learning, something not as practical if it required experimental measurement. This can involve, involve a lot of what-if type of exploration without breaking anything. Lastly, educators can move from traditional paper-based examinations to more experiential testing. Given a problem, whether it be an open or closed-ended type problem, the use of a simulator tool can allow the student to affect a greater breadth to their approach to solving the problem. This approach is also a better representation of what the student will experience once they leave school and go to the real world. 40% of the pillar that sustains academia is research. It is important that the research conducted at institutes of higher learning is both innovative and relevant. It can also be competitive. And for some of the same reasons that industry has moved to rely more on simulation tools, so has academic research. Automotive NVH research that involves tests is costly and requires a need for elaborate test facilities and instrumentation. I'm fortunate and somewhat unique for a Canadian university 
in that my MVH lab is very well equipped and experienced in test. However, simulation tools overcome these challenges by allowing students to learn and research more complex problems with a high degree of context and without the need to rely on elaborate testing. The result is the training of highly qualified graduate students that can practice and explore engineering design options and decisions without the compromises of expensive, time-consuming, or sometimes unattainable test scenarios. When I think of some of my experiences where the NVH driving simulator greatly simplified it, actually permitted me to take on research projects. Um, for example, my work on the perception and optimization of emergency vehicle sirens comes to mind. Uh, a large component of that work involved jury test of driver uh, reactions to different designs of emergency vehicle sirens under different conditions. Just consider the logistics to carry out an in-vehicle jury investigation of real sirens, probably involving real emergency vehicles. The test logistics are a nightmare. While developing the test protocols that used the NVH driving simulator still required measuring the signal data, the flexibility afforded by using the simulator tool to carry out the extensive jury evaluation saved both significant time and research costs. It also provided significantly more flexibility than a jury test that did not use the simulation tool. Another research example I have was a study of in-vehicle speech perception for aged and hearing impaired. The key challenge suggested in this description is in-vehicle. Again, a jury test protocol that involves aged and impaired hearing jurors inside a real vehicle is a significant challenge. While still a challenge using simulation tools, it is the flexibility that these tools offer that gave a significant improvement and allowed for the research to proceed. Research that we otherwise probably wouldn't have been able to do. Research is the exploration of new ideas, concepts, designs, and innovation. If it, what, if it wasn't difficult or a challenge, many of us in academia, we just wouldn't do it. Often the outcome of looking for answers to our questions is more questions. What if we do this? What about if we change that? Simulation tools help us not only find answers to the questions, but it's also an efficient tool to optimize the solution. The benefits that simulation tools give academics and research are directly trickled down to our graduate students and to a degree also our undergraduate students who then take these skills when they go work for industry. I can say that just about all of my graduate students who have been exposed to both text, uh, test and simulation, they all end up working as experts and leaders in the field. They often get job offers before they've even completed their studies. There is a lot of synergy between what I've said about research and what I can say about industrial collaboration. I'm a strong believer when I say that for, the re uh, that for research, we, for it to be relevant, it ideally should have the support and interest from industry, at least from an engineering perspective. Other sciences may be less so. Um, but while there are exceptions, my practice is to seek a partner that can use my research for some benefit and hopefully bring it to market and they can make money on it. In other words, few are better to gauge the relevancy of research than industry. Working with higher education sometimes has the stigma that it'll take too long, though. The positives discussed in the previous slides give simulation tools the advantage of shorter timelines for research completion. This makes industrial partners more comfortable. Industry appreciates the thoroughness of university research, but don't want to endure the schedule that graduate research can require. The use of simulation tools and collaborative research provides an opportunity for the partners to share resources and data more easily. This better facilitates an easy exchange of ideas and results between the researcher and the industrial partner. It also prepares upcoming graduates with the same simulation skills that employers want and expect. In other words, the new hires can hit the ground running. An industrial collaboration is like an extended job interview and the ease and opportunities that integrating simulation tools into the collaborative relationship affords makes us all the better. I'd like to finish by making a couple of additional points. Simulation tools are not the end all for the future. Early on, they were a tool that could help you point, point you in the right direction of a solution before maybe performing a test. 
With more advanced and sophisticated tools, simulation results are now more trusted. In some cases, like the examples I gave in my experience, test was not even a viable approach, and the work would not have been possible for me anyways without the simulation tools. However, especially when used for teaching, the tools must be chosen to meet the educational goals and objectives. I would not use a vehicle dynamic simulation tool for a first or second year course in kinematics. Instead, the student efforts must be directed towards the understanding of the fundamentals, not software. However, in this case, simulation can be an effective demonstration tool, perhaps to help the student understand a concept or maybe to visualize, for example, the impact of excitation on a vehicle suspension at its natural frequencies. By the same token, the complexity of the tool should match the level of the student. Let's face it, students have a much greater expectation when it comes to technology. They're very visual. Simulation tools must have the realism to be engaging. For example, when tours would come through my lab, I was always happy to demonstrate the NVH driving simulator. What impressed most was not my ability though to isolate the spectral makeup of the sound leaking through a, maybe a specific window in the car. What impressed the most was the experience of driving a virtual Ferrari through a simulated European town and experience the audible response of the throttle as they accelerated through a curve. Face it, who wouldn't be engaged by that? You know, that may sound gimmicky, but in the real, but it's a real testament of the power and the sophistication that these engineers engineering tools have and the potential of where they're going. Simulation tools promote the use of critical and evaluative thinking in a student and do so in a very engaging manner. They have just as much of a place in higher education as they do in industry, whether that be as a teaching tool, a demonstration tool, or a research tool. Just like in industry, the use of simulation tools speeds up the process and is most often the less expensive alternative, or at least a necessary complement to test. And I'd like to say a very effective teaching tool. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your attention and time.